thousand years ago. In short, he claimed that our brain once functioned totally differently. He argued that once one part of the brain appeared to be speaking, and a second part of the brain listens and obeys. The stored up experience of the right hemisphere was transmitted to the left hemisphere via auditory hallucinations. One might say our inner voice is a type of leftover of this old brain wiring. Jaynes argued that this old mental model was replaced by the conscious mode of thought, which he argues is based on metaphorical language. The brain is this vast, amazing even, um, reservoir of, of knowledge from DNA to whatever it can do. It, it's it's ac absolutely fascinating. Our Western brains really have problems into trying to zoom in, tune in, into a Mayan mindset. They are slightly differently wired. People like Julian James is one who has said that actually the brain is hardwired differently than for our ancestors about a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years ago. That really we live not only in different times but also occupy a different space of mind. So for us to understand what a Mayan might have meant with 2012 is really not that simple. It's not just as straightforward as we might think it is. So this brings up two interesting questions. One, is time travel possible by changing our brain chemistry? It's something which I think needs to be really explored for 2012 because if there were something out there which could actually change our brain chemistry or for one reason or another our brain chemistry gets changed through an external factor could be medical even um, our mind might actually literally be going out of its mind all the time and that is something which we really need to um, focus upon because time travel as such and everything to do with the mind might in a present environment our present scientific understanding, it might be literally a red pill or a blue pill away. Stephen Gibbs claims to have invented something called a hyperdimensional resonator, which uh, transports your astral body to another time by the use of radionic tuner dials. And Walter Rawls, who's very interested in magnetism, uh, he conducted an experiment where he modified some uh, glasses frames to hold a, a North Pole magnet up against his pineal gland. He did that for um, 10 to 30 minutes per day for several weeks. And over those weeks, he started to see, uh, first of all, a semi-transparent person walk through the room. And then over the weeks, it got more solid. And eventually, he was completely in the scene watching this person who had become totally solid and then the person turned around and saw him and recognized him as the person he'd seen the previous week. So he'd become a ghost in someone else's dimension through um, playing around with uh, magnetism in the pineal gland. Most stories of time travel involve magnetic or electromagnetic fields. And it could be that these produce their effect by stimulating pineal magnetite, which causes the secretion of internal hallucinogens, of which at least three are known to be produced in the pineal gland. These molecules are very, very similar to those which were ingested by Terence McKenna that uh, enabled him to come up with this whole time wave concept. And again, very, very similar to the molecules that were ingested by the Maya shamans. Uh, and of course, probably had something to do with them uh, fixing their calendar to 2012 as well. Geomagnetic storms have been known to cause visions in people who are particularly sensitive, such as uh, temporal lobe epileptics and schizophrenics. Uh, and that probably has to do with the fact that there's uh, magnetite around the pineal gland and in the bones of our sinuses. And uh, under a shifting geomagnetic situation, uh, that could perhaps um, cause the pineal gland to secrete these um, hallucinogenic molecules. Well, in the case of uh, a geomagnetic reversal, which some scientists say we are now uh, in the beginning stages of, perhaps that sort of situation of people having visions would be much more widespread.
2012 is the Mayan end time. In Christianity, the end of times is linked with the apocalypse and the return of Jesus Christ. Before a period of bliss, heaven will descend upon the earth. The Zolkin is a Yucatec word meaning a count of days. It concerns a 260 day calendar that is a combination of 13 numbers and 20 day signs. This was used as a, an almanac to find out if this was a good day for doing something on. You would go see the, um, the calendar priest and he'd tell you if the, if the energies for this day were compatible with what you had in mind. Every 260 days the whole um, calendar repeats. Well, the long count calendar, which is the one that uh, incorporates the 13 Bacton cycle, the one that ends in 2012, um, this also has a 260 unit construction because it consists, uh, the, the um, 13 Bacton cycle consists of 260 cartoons, where each cartoon is just under 20 years. So that the whole 13 Bacton cycle started in 3114 BC and ends on the winter solstice in 2012. Well, those 260 cartoons can be mapped out on the same grid structure that, that we normally use to look at the Zolkin. And something which Jose Alguel suggested is that as the Zolkin is said by uh, anthropologists who've interviewed the Maya that still use it, it's said to be based on human gestation. When a woman misses her period, there are 260 days after that before the baby is due. So Arguel suggested that possibly because the beginning of recorded history sort of coincides with um, the beginning of the 13 Bacton cycle, that maybe it somehow shows a planetary gestation, that some sort of an evolutionary progression of the human race towards some significant event at the end of it. To measure a long count date, there was a position for recording the number of days, up to 19. Then if there were 20 or more, multiples of 20 were recorded in the adjacent position. This is similar to our decimal system, except that it is 20 based, or vegesimal. The 20 day cycle is called a unal. 18 unals make a tune of 360 days. 20 tunes make a cot tune. 20 cartoons make a Bach tune and 13 Bach tunes make up the era from 3114 BC to 2012. A total of 1,872,000 days or around 5,125 years. However, even longer cycles were used. For example, 20 Bach tunes is a pick tune. 20 pick tunes is a calib tune, 20 calib tunes is a chinchil tune, and 20 chinchil tunes is an alu tune, or 65 million tunes, roughly 64 million years. The long count date of the start point in 3114 BC is written as the completion of 13 Bach tunes, with zero ka tunes, zero tunes, zero unals, zero days. On the winter solstice of 2012, the same date is repeated for the first time in a span of 5,125 solar years. So it's a fact that after 5,125 years, the 13 Bakhtun cycle of the Mayan calendar ends. The question is will a new cycle begin? just as our clocks keep ticking every year on the 1st of January or whether something else entirely will happen. The problem is also that the long count actually was stopped at the Spanish conquest. The Mayans themselves 
no longer used it and it's only in the past century that scientists and Mayans have begun to rediscover it and 2012 as such is a relatively new phenomenon because there is this hiatus within the Mayan civilization itself but it's also a problem because all the expertise has been lost. There is an incomplete inscription on the Tortuguero Monument 6 that records this 13th Bach tune and date. This is the only known inscription that mentions 2012. The end date is also carved on the walls of the Temple of Inscriptions at Palenque, as well as on the so-called Creation Monument at Curigua. But this is the previous instant of it, in 3114 BC, the last creation while 2012 is the completion of the current creation and hopefully the start of the next one. It's the only monument or inscription from the classic era that's known of that mentions the year 2012 and the end of the 13 Bacton cycle. So what the Tordoguero monument says about 2012 is that in the 13th Bacton on four Ahau, three Kankin, that is three calendars cross-referencing one date which we can translate as 21st December 2012 it will occur the Bolon Yoktiku which is the the nine support gods will descend to the and then we can't finish the sentence because the there is damage to that last glyph what is saying is that in 2012 it's going to be a return of these nine gods there is confirmation in the Chilam Balam prophecies. The, the Chilam Balam prophecies were prophecies that were written down after the Spanish arrived, so they had been tainted with um, Spanish ideas. They had been carried down by worth, word of mouth for thousands of years. One of the things that were predicted by the Chilam Balams for the time of the return of these gods was that there would be a chalice of fire that would appear over the sea and a huge storm that would extinguish the, the sun for maybe three days. In the Chilam Balam of Kumael, it says that in Khatun 4 Ahau, which is in the cartoon from April 1993 to December 2012, the feathered serpent god Kukul Khan will return. This god originated with the Toltecs as Quetzalcoatl, and it is now known that the original Quetzalcoatl religion was based on raising a serpent-like energy up the spine. The very same concept is the Hindu concept of Kundalini. In the Aztec myth, Quetzalcoatl sacrificed himself, spending eight days in the underworld and reappeared as Venus. He is expected to return between Venus transits and we are now between the Venus transit of June 2004 and the next one in June 2012. So just like the Christians are expecting the return of Jesus Christ, actually the Mayans are expecting the return of, of these nine gods. They constantly talk about the nine, which they call the Bolanyoktaku or the Bolontiku. And some of them see this as nine deities, some of them see them as one deity with almost like nine aspects. And you don't just see them in the main world, you also see them with the Aztecs. And the Aztecs for them see them as the night lords and for them they link it to nine levels of hell and so 2012 is very much to do with somehow the manifestation of these entities or entity from the lower world into our reality <laughs> 